everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss deriving our long run average cost curve as the lower envelope of our short run average cost curves. And just to start, the most important distinction that we need to grasp is that in the short run, the firm faces a fixed input to production, which is usually capital in our textbooks and courses. And there is a variable input, which is usually labor. So sometimes we notate this via our production function. So the firm produces quantity Q, which is a function of capital, which is K bar and labor L, where the bar on the K variable here indicates that the level of capital is fixed. In contrast to the short run, in the long run, there are no fixed inputs to production. So capital is not fixed and the firm can choose the levels of both capital and labor that they wish. So all of our inputs are variable. So there are other differences between the long and the short run for the firm, but this one here, the idea that capital is fixed in the short run, but variable in the long run is really the important one for understanding the derivation of our long run average cost curve. The other thing that's important to think about is just what our average cost curves are doing. So we have two axes on the horizontal axes. We have quantity and on the vertical axes, we have a measure of average costs. Now, our short run cost curves show the average costs for various quantities when capital is fixed at some amount. So that's what makes them short run cost curves. They correspond to some fixed level of capital. And typically a short run average cost curve will look like this. So it will be U shaped. The important thing is that any individual short run average cost curve corresponds to some fixed amount of capital. And what we don't usually explicitly say in our courses is this means that depictions of individual short run average cost curves like I have here really just show one of many possible short run average cost curves. And this is because there are lots of different levels of capital that a firm could hold. To say this another way, you can think about it as, well, there is a theoretical short run average cost curve associated with every possible level of capital that a firm could have. So if we go to another axis, which is zoomed out for lack of a better word, so that the quantity axis here is long enough to accommodate any possible quantity that a firm could produce either in the short run or the long run. Well, for some particular level of capital, we might get this short run average cost curve here, so SRAC1, but at a different level of capital, if the firm was fixed at that level, we would get a different short run average cost curve, maybe something like SRAC2. So we have different short run average cost curves that corresponds to different levels of capital that the firm could hold. To give some intuition around this, we might think about SRAC1 being associated with perhaps one factory and its associated equipment and SRAC2 with a different factory, maybe a bigger one or one with equipment that is more suited to producing larger amounts. One thing to note here is that there is an overlap between these two curves for some quantities. So if the firm was to choose to produce a quantity in this region here that I have in pink, well, they could choose the level of capital associated with SRAC1 or SRAC2, either will suffice. So given that there is a short run average cost curve associated with every possible level of capital that a firm could hold, we can actually just fill out our whole diagram here with different short run average cost curves, which are all associated with different levels of capital. And let's just for purposes of illustration, pretend that that's it, that what I have on the screen here, these eight short run average cost curves represent all of the possible short run average cost curves for the firm. Uh, and these are associated with all the various levels of capital that the firm could hold. And so now that we have all of our short run average cost curves, we can think about what the firm will do in the long run. And this will tell us about what the long run average cost curve will look like. And just to recall again, the firm can choose in the long run the amount of capital that they wish. And so let's just take any quantity, let's say Q star here, and we'll ask the question in the long run, what will the average cost for the firm be if they want to make Q star units of output? And one part of the response to this question is, well, given that the firm can choose the level of capital that they wish, it makes sense that they're going to choose the level of capital that corresponds to the cheapest way of producing Q star units. 
So if we draw a line up, you can see that as I've drawn it here, in order to produce Q star, the firm has two options. The firm can use the amount of capital that's associated with SRAC4, and the average cost would be, well, AC prime, or they can use the amount of capital that's associated with SRAC3, and the average cost here will be AC prime prime. But of course, the firm would use the amount of capital that's associated with SRAC4, because the average cost of producing Q star units at SRAC4 is lower. So AC prime is lower than AC prime prime. So the average cost of producing Q star units in the long run will be AC prime because that's our cost minimizing a choice. And we can think about other quantities as well. So to produce Q star star, for instance, the firm would choose, well, the level of capital that corresponds to SRAC7 to produce Q star star star, the firm would choose the level of capital that corresponds to SRAC2, etc. And what I hope that you can see is that if we think about all of the possible quantities that the firm could produce, in order to find the average costs associated with the production of those quantities and therefore find the long run average cost curve for the firm, we would essentially be tracing out the lowest part of all of the possible short run average cost curves. So something like this that I have in red here. And sometimes you hear people describe the long run average cost curve as the lower envelope of our short run average cost curves. And I hope that you can see why it's because it kind of hugs our short run average cost curves from the bottom. Now, as I've drawn it here, our long run average cost curve, which is the red line, is kind of wavy. And that's really just because I only drew eight short run average cost curves. The thought is, though, that if we recognize that the firm can choose really many, many different levels of capital, well, there would be many short run average cost curves associated with all of those possible levels of capital. So something perhaps like this and even more, really. And if we take the lower envelope of these uh, kind of multitude of short run average cost curves, well, the line becomes quite smooth. And actually at the limit, if we think about all of the possible uh, short run average cost curves, just heaps and heaps, you would get this smooth line, which is probably familiar to you from your textbooks and courses. And so that's it. That's really the derivation of our long run average cost curve as the lower envelope of our short run average cost curves. In terms of our economic implications, one interesting outcome of this is that the long run average cost of producing any quantity will never be more expensive than it is in the short run. And this perhaps points to a more general observation that the presence of constraints on the use of inputs will typically leads to higher production costs. So there is another long run cost curve that students often like to be explained in more detail, and that's the long run marginal cost curve. So my next video will be on, on our long run marginal cost curve, and I'll link to that below when it's ready. I do hope that the video helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. Thanks to my subscribers, especially those who have been suggesting videos. It's really useful for me and it's just um, nice to hear from you. Uh, so everyone, I hope you have a lovely day or night and uh, keeping safe.